This is a cross-section of an axisymmetric sample. And this is an initial mesh we considered for this model. The initial mesh seemed to be coarse, so we refined it a little bit. This is even a more refined mesh. But as you may guess till now, the mesh in refined at the stress concentration area is more. This mesh refinement process is done by Abacus Adaptive Remeshing. Let's see what this feature is. Remeshing rules enable Abacus CIE to adapt your mesh iteratively to meet error indicator goals that you have specified. You can allow Abacus CIE to perform the iterative remeshing and analysis operations, or you can remesh manually and study the effect of your remeshing rule on the mesh and the resulting analysis. So why use adaptive remeshing? Adaptive remeshing can improve the quality of your simulation results. Adaptive remeshing can be helpful in the following cases. When you're not sure how detailed or simple a mesh should be to maintain accuracy, or how basic it can be without affecting the results too much. When it is difficult to design an adequately refined mesh near a region of interest, such as near a stress concentration. When you do not know a location of interest, such as with formation of a plastic zone. Now, the question is, can you use adaptive remeshing for all analyses? This table shows the mesh controls that must be assigned to a region that will use adaptive remeshing. In addition, you must assign these supported mesh controls to any face or cell that is adjacent to a region that is included in a remeshing rule. Moreover, adaptive remeshing is available only for Abacusa standard. In addition, adaptive remeshing is available only for the following Abacus standard procedures, including static, general, and linear perturbation, quasi-static, heat transfer, fully coupled thermal stress, coupled pore fluid diffusion stress, coupled thermal electrical. There are some conventions for remeshing rule. For example, a remeshing rule works in combination with edge seating, element type, and meshing method to determine the mesh at a particular adaptivity iteration. You can define multiple remeshing rules over multiple regions of your model. If you apply multiple remeshing rules to the same region of a model, Abacus CAE applies a conservative element size specification. And the rule that defines a finer mesh at a particular point takes precedence. Now we are going to review the adaptive remeshing process. The yellow blocks show the user actions and the blue ones show the automated Abacus actions. As the starting point, you must create the model first. After that, you mesh the model. Then you create a remeshing rule. And then you create an adaptivity process. Then you submit the adaptivity process. After that, the adaptivity process will submit the job. In this step, if the defined meshing rule is satisfied, the adaptivity process will be finished. And you can review the final results. If the defined meshing rule is not satisfied, the Abakas will compute the new element sizes. And it will submit the adaptivity process. After that, again, it needs to submit the analysis job, and a loop will be created here. This process will be continued until the adaptivity remeshing rule is satisfied or the number of loop iterations become greater than the value you defined for. Let's see how you can create a remeshing rule in Abacus. To create a remeshing rule, click on the Create Remeshing Rule icon located with the Mesh Tools in the Mesh Module Toolbox. Select the regions to which Abax CAE will apply the remeshing rule 
or click Done to select the entire model. The Create Remeshing Rule dialog box appears. Click the Step and Indicator tab to select the following. The step to which the remeshing rule will be applied. The error indicator output variables that Abaka's CAE will write to the output database. And the frequency at which they will be written. Click the Sizing Method tab to select the following. The method that Abaki's CAE will use to calculate the size of the elements during the remeshing process. Whether to use automatic reduction of error indicator targets for the adaptive remeshing process, or whether to specify the error indicator targets. Click the Constraints tab to select constraints on the element size during the remeshing process. Click OK to create the remeshing rule and to close the Create Remeshing Rule dialog box. Now the question is, what are the error indicator's variables? Error indicator variables are the basis of the adaptive remeshing process. They provide information to Abacus AE that describes where to refine a mesh to approach or achieve desired error indicator targets. In addition, Abaki's CAE uses the error indicator variables to determine where the mesh can be coarsened without introducing unacceptable errors. Abaki's error indicator variables provide a measure of the local error resulting from your mesh discretization. A number of error indicators are available. Each error indicator, CE, provides an indication of error in a particular base solution variable, CB. Now the question is, how to choose the appropriate error indicator. You will typically choose which error indicator variables are used to control adaptive remeshing based on the type of analysis and the nature of the loading. The type of analysis says certain variables apply naturally to certain types of analyses. For example, the heat flux indicator, HFLI, is used in analyses with temperature degrees of freedom. When selecting error indicator variables in the remeshing rule editor in Abaki's CAE, your choices will be restricted to variables available for the selected procedure type. The nature of the loading says some error indicator variables only indicate discretization error at the current analysis time, the particular increment in a step. Other error indicator variables provide a record of the solution history up to the current analysis time. For example, if your simulation involves non-proportional loading or a significantly non-linear response, you will typically see better adaptive remeshing results. When using error indicator variables that record the solution history, This table lists the error indicator variables and indicates whether they record the solution history. We have prepared a remeshing process case study here. Our model is an axisymmetric sample. And here are the dimensions in millimeter. As you can see, the lower edge of the model cannot move along the second direction of the coordinate. And the left edge of the model cannot move along the first axis and rotate about the other's axis. A pressure of magnitude 1000 is applied to the top edge of the model. The material properties are as shown here. And the step for this analysis is a static general step. In order to mesh the part, we used local seeds and considered seven elements for the right and bottom edges, as you can see. In order to mesh the part, we used local seeds and considered seven elements for the right and bottom edges, as you can then see. Then we defined a remeshing rule. The step and the error indicator variables are chosen. The error indicator variable is Mises equivalent stress. Other tabs values are the default ones. In order to create an automatic remeshing process, you must click on the Create Adaptivity Process in the Job module. 
In this window, you must choose the model you want to do remeshing process for, and also the maximum number of remeshing iterations. After that, you must submit the adaptivity process which you have created by click on the Submit option. This is the list of adaptivity analysis iterations which are done for remeshing process. After these iterations, the remeshing rule we created is satisfied. Now it is time to see the results. This is the model's mesh and von Mises stress contour at each iteration. Abake CAE requests error indicator output variables in every job that you create while the remeshing rule is active. The remeshing rule has no effect on the mesh during the first job. However, during the first job, Abacus uses the remeshing rule to calculate the error indicator output variables. In subsequent adaptive remesh iterations, the remeshing rule augments your mesh size specification to produce a mesh that attempts to optimize element size and placement to achieve the error indicator goals described in the rule. As the final section, let's answer some questions about the adaptivity remeshing. The first question is, what is the difference between automatic adaptive remeshing and manual adaptive remeshing? If you choose to allow Abaca CAE to remesh your model iteratively, the adaptivity process in the job module controls the adaptive remeshing for you. You need only define the remeshing rule in the mesh module and apply the rule to the regions in your model that you want to be remeshed. Conversely, you can manually apply modified remeshing rules and view the impact of your modifications on the generated mesh. When you are satisfied that your remeshing rule is producing the desired mesh, you can use the rule to drive a sequence of iterative remeshing and analysis operations that is controlled by Abacus CA. The second question is, when do you need to use manual adaptive remeshing? You can use manual adaptive remeshing to do the following. First, to learn about the impact of various size function and error indicator output variables on the mesh generated by Abaki's CAE. Second, if your analysis is expected to take a long time, you can close the Abaki's CAE session and make the license tokens available for another user or for a new session. However, to continue the adaptivity process, you must read the output database generated by the analysis and manually remesh the model. Third, if the analysis ended prematurely, for example, because of insufficient memory, you can use manual remeshing to continue the adaptivity process. And this is the end of this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed. Your comments are well accepted to improve our tutorials. Wish you the best.